Hello friends, welcome to Suresh Agarwal's Mathematics Shortcuts. In this video, I have the entire review of the chapter on fractions. The chapter on fractions, you know, it comes first for class six students. And, uh, you know, when you start learning this uh, chapter on fractions, it extrapolates and expands into different concepts in class seven. So you need to form a very good base of the chapter. And therefore, I decided to bring up this amazing video for you, which is the review questions on fractions for class seven students. If you are preparing for competitions, then this video will prove very useful. And if you want to download the detailed PDF of this particular uh, chapter on fractions, the worksheet, then we have our learning loop app. So you can download the learning loop app and see what content we have posted there. Whether you are a CBSC student uh, studying in class 6 to 10 or you are somebody who is preparing for a quantitative aptitude exam, we have lots and lots of ebooks of short tricks, uh, then reasoning course, uh, the Vedic maths, you know, mental maths, everything is involved in that. Speedy calculations, CBSC worksheets, a lot of free videos, test series, and everything has been uploaded on the Learning Loop app. This is the logo of the app, so be sure that you are downloading the correct thing. If you are uh, facing any problem, then you can send me a message on WhatsApp for unlimited validity ebooks 9896369963. That's the number. But mind you that it, the content is not absolutely free. It carries a nominal cost. And uh, if you are willing to invest a little bit on your education, then you can visit our app and uh, you can send me a message on WhatsApp. Let's see the questions in hand now. The first part of this video is based on adding and subtracting the fractions and mixed numbers. So what do you do to add these type of uh, numbers, you know, wherein you have denominators which are multiples of a particular number. Like in the first question, 11 upon 10 minus 1 upon 15 minus 2 fifth. All three denominators, 5, 10 and 15, they are multiples of 5. So what is the LCM of 10, 15 and 5? That is the common denominator of 10, 15 and 5. See, 5 is a factor of 10 and 15. Even if it is a factor of one of the larger numbers, then you should not even consider that. Now, 10 and 15, they are not co-prime. That means they have a common factor between them. And 10 does not divide 15. So take the multiples of the larger number like 15 2 times is 30 and now you can see that 30 is divisible by 10. So the LCM of these three numbers is 30. These are amazing short tricks you know which you can practice on this channel Suresh Agarwal's Mathematics Shortcuts and I'm sure you're going to find them amazing and you'll be able to calculate 10 times faster uh, when it comes to basic uh, tricks on finding LCM, HCF, fractions, percentages and whatnot. So now you know that the common denominator is going to be 30. So whenever you have a common denominator 30 and you have 11 upon 10 as the first fraction, then you know that 10 will be converted to 30 when you multiply it by 3, right? So you need to multiply the numerator by 3, which gives you 33 minus, then you have 1 15th. How do you convert 15 to 30? Multiply by 2, right? So you will multiply the numerator by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. And then minus 2 fifth. How do you convert 5 into 30? You multiply that by 6. And therefore you multiply this also by 6. Giving you 12 in the numerator. And therefore 33 minus 2 is 31. And 31 minus 12 is 19. And therefore 19 upon 30 happens to be the first correct answer for this particular question. Friends, handling fractions is not, uh, you know, difficult, but, you know, you should be aware of the basic short tricks of LCM and HCF. That's what uh, is the base of this particular topic. Let's have the second one, 7 and half plus 5, 3, 8. Now, here, there are two different ways of doing it. Either you can do the whole number parts first, 7 plus 5 is 12, and then add the fractional parts like 1 half and 3, 8. How do you add 1 half and 3 8? Again, common denominator will work for you. 
so 2 and 8 2 is a factor of 8 right so 8 is the common denominator 2 times 4 is 8 so 4 plus 3 and therefore 12 and this becomes 7 8 which in itself is a proper fraction and therefore 12 7 upon 8 happens to be the correct answer of this particular question very easy right handling mixed fraction is a skill if you can do it directly nothing like it but otherwise you will be spending a lot of time in uh, you know converting all those mixed fractions in the form of uh, improper fractions and then adding them and then again reconverting them into mixed fraction form so if you can do it directly it's wonderful let's see this question now the ordering of fractions so we have 3 5th 7 12th and 4 9th in this question which we have to order them right descending order that means you have to write the highest one first and then uh, keep on writing the next lower one in this also there is one thing you do right the common denominator method which the teachers teach you at school but cross multiplication method is the best method of ordering the fractions so you can see this 3 gives you a product of 36 when you multiply it by the denominator of the second fraction and the 7 gives you a product of 35 so which one is higher 36 is higher and therefore 7 upon 12 is the smaller one out of the first two fractions now you can compare 3 5th and 4 9th likewise 3 and 9 27 4 and 5 20 so 27 is greater so 3 5th happens to be the greatest of the three fractions now it's just the comparison of 7 12th and 4 9th how do you compare them 7 9 times is 63 and 4 12 times is 48 63 is greater therefore 7 12th is greater and so 7 12th comes in the middle and followed by 4 9th this is the descending order of the three fractions which are given there so cross multiplication works wonders but you can go for the traditional method if you don't uh, uh, like this then you can uh, make a common denominator of, uh, of all the three fractions and then see compare the numerators you will get the answer that way also that's the method they teach in the school the next type of question is to reduce 351 upon 99 in the lowest form and then to express it as a mixed number now how do you uh, know what is the common factor of 351 and 99 so you should know what is the HCF or GCF of 351 and 99 divisibility rules that is the base of this particular topic and all the students watching this you should know the HCF and uh, GCF rules how to find the HCF of two numbers three numbers four numbers and how to ensure that you know the divisibility of particular numbers by you know 7 11 13 all those numbers are really important but in this case 351 99 is obviously divisible by 3 right and if you divide 99 by 3 you are going to get 33 but what about 351 very easy 3 plus 5 8 8 plus 1 9 all the digits add up to 9 and 9 is divisible by 3 therefore the entire number is divisible by 3 so what do you get if you divide 351 by 3 it's 1 1 7 and now you can see again 33 is divisible by 3 which gives you 11 and 117 again gives you a sum of 9 so 3 3 times is 9 3 9 times is 27 and there we go 39 upon 11 is the lowest form because you cannot find any further common factor between numerator and denominator and how do you convert that into a mixed number if you divide 39 by 11 you are going to get 3 as the quotient and you will get 6 as the remainder how do you write it you write it as quotient remainder upon divisor so 3 6 upon 11 happens to be the mixed number representation of 351 upon 99 in the lowest form that's another type of question let's see some more we have some statement problems also in this particular worksheet uh, worksheet which i am talking about uh, Shruti spends uh, 6 3 by 4 hours daily on studies. So, 6 3 by 4 hours daily on studies. Out of this time, she does written work 
for 3 1 by 8 hours. So we have 3 1 by 8 hour, uh, another mixed fraction there. So how much time does she spend on other work? So 6 3 by 4 on studies, on studies. And out of that, this is really important here, out of this time, that means the time 6 3 by 4 is divided into two parts. One is the time 3 1 8 hours which uh, she uh, spends on written work and what is the time spent on other work, other work. That's what you need to find. So obviously you will be subtracting 6 3 by 4 and 3 1 by 8 to get to the answer for this. How do you subtract that? You can do it directly. The whole number part 6 and 3, 6 minus 3 is 3 and add what? 3 fourth minus 1 eighth. That is the fractional parts. And 3 fourth minus 1 eighth, the common denominator is 8. So this is 2 times which gives you 6 in the numerator and 1 obviously comes as it is. So 5 upon 8. So the answer for the question is 3 as the whole number part and 5 8 as the fractional part. This is the answer for this particular question. The last question for this video is based on a statement problem where you have the difference of uh, fractions in, uh, in three different parts. Subtract the difference of 9 by 16 and 1 by 4. So you have to subtract this difference from, so if you have to subtract this from something, the something will come in the beginning of the question. So what is that something? It is the difference of 2 3rd and 1 8th. So this is the question actually. You can do it directly by opening the bracket and uh, taking care of all the four denominators at the same time. But uh, it's good if you can do it uh, in two different ways like solving two different brackets. This is 16 minus 3 which is 13 and 8 3 is 24. You know why did I do that? Because 3 and 8, the two denominators are co-prime here and the co-prime denominators have their product as their LCM. Minus, here they are not co-prime, 4 divides 16 exactly. So 16 is the LCM, 9 minus, this is 4 times, so 4. So our question reduces to 13 over 24 minus, 9 minus 4 is 5, 5 upon 16. And you can see we have a common uh, factor of 8 in the denominator there, 24 and 16. So you can take the common denominator now. 16 doesn't divide 24. So take multiple of 24. 24, the next multiple is 48. And 48 is divisible by 16. So 24 2 times. So 13 2 times is 26. 16 3 times. So 5 3 times is 15. And so the answer for the question will be 11 upon 48. So this is the final answer for the uh, statement problem given there in this. Friends, we have around 60 questions uh, based on this particular video in the practice worksheet which I, I was talking about. So you can download our uh, learning loop app and uh, get hold of all those stuff which we have been posting on the uh, app and also on, on our website www.sureshagarwal.in that's my name in the website sureshagarwal.in so you can download it from there also and in case you find any difficulty in downloading you can send me a message on whatsapp 9896369963 that's the number very useful video for class 7 students and i'm sure you are going to share it with all your friends i hope you have subscribed the channel by now and click the bell shaped icon for getting all the notifications. Thanks for watching this and all the best.